And this morning I talked to Coach Heather Olmstead about the Sweet 16 and much more. All right, Heather, you've played 31 matches this year. It's come to the Sweet 16, but here we are. Uh, how's the preparation going into uh, the biggest match of the season? Yeah, it's, it's been great. Got out to Pittsburgh yesterday, had a great flight with the team, and got in the gym a little bit yesterday. And a normal prep, like we always do, but obviously, like you said, it's the biggest match of the year. It's our next match. We get to continue to practice every day. We're grateful for that and looking forward to playing a good Purdue team tomorrow. You've been to the Sweet 16, what, six times now, uh, which is insane. What about this experience uh, is new each time, and what about it is very similar? Um, yeah, each time it's, it's exciting. It, new team usually, hopefully. Um, new, new area, new venue. So for us, there's some familiarity with Pittsburgh because we played here in the preseason, so that's kind of fun for us to be back get to go into the gym later today and practice. Um, but the excitement is always there to be able to continue to play in the tournament, see how good each group can get. And I think this, this team's just trying to take advantage of, of one more practice today before we play at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. It's been a minute, but like you said, you've already made this trip, which is super unique. Sometimes the men's team will go and play where, you know, the final four is just in case. You didn't know that, hey, the regional will be at Pitt when you played Pitt and High Point and uh, Bowling Green. But here we are. So what kind of advantage is that for your team having already made this trip? Yeah, I wish I could say we were that smart as uh, <laughs> coaching staff to arrange this convenience. But really, we... Uh, I've got a great friendship with Dan Fisher and wanted to play his team in the preseason. And so I think we talked about after our match that it was just kind of poetic that we get to go back to where kind of it all started and our first loss and get to have an opportunity just to play in that gym again that we're familiar with. They've got a great gym, great fan base. So um, I think it's just kind of cool and get to play a different, you know, team in, in Purdue on a neutral site. Um, I think it's exciting for our group. Let's talk about the Boilermakers. They're the six overall seed. You're the 11 overall seed. This is a team that is third in the country in blocks per set. Does that adjust your game plan or how you approach attacking the ball at all, given how good they are blocking? I think we're always prepared to play great blocking teams. We've done that in our conference. So our, our offense is trained to be able to hit high and hard like everyone else in the country wants to do. So I, I think that they do a great job blocking. They do a great job defensively. They're scrappy. They're gritty. So we're going to just keep bringing our offensive game plan that we have every match and, and try to try to distribute the ball and, and take great swings, smart swings. But, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a good, I think, defensive and offensive battle. What kind of motivation is there to set yourself up with a win against Purdue so that you'd have a, a rematch with the only team that beat BYU this year in Pitt? Yeah, we actually haven't talked about that once this whole tournament. I mean, it's so, there's so many unknowns. You don't, I mean, that's not a guarantee for them to be there. They've got to play a great Kansas team. So that we've never talked about that. I think if that were to happen, that would be a conversation, but it's never once come up in our team discussions. I think this group is motivated to see how good we can be and how far we can get in the tournament and you can't control who you're playing or where. And, um, you know, we're excited to play a good, a good Purdue team. I, the Shondells, Dave Shondell is a great coach. Um, and they're well-coached, well-trained team. And they play a very physical style of volleyball that, that you're going to see very quickly in the match. Um, they've got two or three hitters. They really like to set. Uh, we're going to have to get our hands in their face pretty early to control some of their offense that they got coming at us. We're talking to the West Coast Conference Coach of the Year, Heather Olmstead on BYU Sports Nation. Also the Pacific South region. I don't know exactly what that means, but you won Coach of the Year in that as well. Congratulations. What does that mean to you to, I guess, have validating moments for the program perhaps? Yeah, I think thanks. I appreciate it. Um, there's a bunch of regions across the country. Coaches get um, Coach of the Year. And Pacific South is the one that we land in, and really it's a tribute to our players and they're just a bunch of beasts, and so they, they make me look good. They make our staff look good. Our staff has done a great job all year. It's a credit to, to BYU and the program, but obviously the job we've done, it, every time someone says how many wins we have, I'm like, how is that possible? Like, it just doesn't even <laughs> register um, how good this team's been and how much they've been able to have success and play together and play hard and resilient, and I mean, that last match was just 
I mean, it was incredible to be a part of that last win to continue our journey in the tournament and to have that moment with this team. And um, awards are great. They're always team awards and it's nice to get recognition. Um, and we just want to see if we can keep this, this journey going. It was such an emotional journey last week because you play Boise State seasons on the line. They're a conference champ. You got to bring it. You take care of business in three Friday. Quick turnaround to a team you had played in September, but you were two very different teams in Utah. That was an emotional win, as you talked about. And then, hey, we're on to the Sweet 16. So emotionally, what was that like Friday, Saturday, and then moving on to Purdue whenever you did? Yeah, it was pretty incredible uh, to be able to play at home the first two rounds, play a good Boise State team. We played really well. We knew uh, we'd be challenged. You know, every match is, is more of a challenge, not only emotionally, but physically with the, the level. And uh, Utah, you know, was a great opponent. And uh, I mean, you were there, the energy in the gym, it was electric, the, the crowd, Cougar Nation came out. Um, you know, it was just great volleyball, back and forth. Um, and we really just gutted it out. We, we really, at the end of the sets, you look how close those sets were, you know, two, three, and four, they were, you're winning by the slimmest of margins, which it was the, the final point, right? The slimmest of margins, if that ball lands in, you know, it's a different game, but, um, so the emotions were obviously very high for the seniors. That's their last home game ever in the Smith field house to have, you know, a six year player in Kennedy, a fifth year and some transfers and four-year kids that just had that moment, not only in the Smithfield house, but against their rival to continue and get back. And, you know, I told this team, and I haven't probably emphasized it enough, to be able to get back to the Sweet 16 within six months of when you just were, I don't know if we appreciate how special that is. We don't have to let that sit in our mouths for a year, six, seven months later. We're back in the same spot where we wanted to be, and we want to play better, and we want to play our best volleyball tomorrow. And that's the challenge that we're posing to this group. Let's be our very best tomorrow against Purdue and, and leave it all out in the court and see what happens. Saturday was awesome. It's BYU and Utah in the NCAA tournament. I mean, the two top 16 teams, that was incredible. Let's talk about the timing of this game. 11 a.m. Eastern time, 9 a.m. local time. We'll actually be on the air doing the show when it's on, giving reports. Do, how does that uh, change things in terms of preparation? Because this is a very early and kind of different match. Oh yeah, we love it. We we requested that time, and so we got it. It was great. I'm kidding. We didn't really. <laughs> we uh, we played we played Bowling Green at noon in Pitt um, a couple months ago. We've already talked about it. Um, we played two matches in one day out here. We played Bowling Green and Pitt that night, and High Point the next day at 12. I mean, it's it's volleyball. You got to show up whenever, whoever, and we're ready. So we love it. Um, we're going to get ahead to practice shortly here. Our, our girls are chomping at the bit. And so this, this different regional setup where you're playing Thursday, Saturday, instead of Friday, Saturday, um, the preparation's a little, little shorter, but at the same time, these, these women are ready to go. We've been training for four months. We're ready to play. Um, so we're excited that we get to, to, to start off the sweet 16 matches with a great match um, and hopefully continue our journey. We aired the Kenzie Kerber Deep Blue last night and it went out on social media and we played it on the show prior to our conversation here. What has she meant to BYU Volleyball this year? Yeah, th thanks for doing that. That Deep Blue is, is incredible what you guys put together. Um, just, just meant a lot. Uh, obviously, her accolades that she brought to this team, her experience, her leadership, her competitiveness, her smile, her, the way that she interacts with her teammates. She's just a, she's just a, a joy to be around. Um, and so it's just been a wonderful four or five months to be around her and to be able to learn more about her and her journey and, and to add that to our already accomplished, you know, team. It's just, it's been cool. It's been a cool journey. I'm glad she got to tell a little bit of her story and journey. So fans can ap appreciate what she's been through. Um, some struggles and where she's at now. And I think people can, can relate to that and, and maybe didn't know certain things about Kenzie. So I think when you're vulnerable enough to tell a story like that, it says a lot about you and, and, and your self-belief and confidence in yourself to go and tell that story to the world. Um, and she did that so she could, you know, affect other people and tell her conversion story and, and let people know why she's happy to be at BYU and proud to, to play her final season at BYU with our team. It really was. Uh, produced by Travis Cameron. He did such a good job. And for those who don't know, there's a deep blue on you and your family. It was the first one, and right now Kenzie Kerber is the latest one. So go check those out. 
two great women's volleyball stories. Well, Heather, BYU Sports Nation karma's coming your way. Best of luck tomorrow. We can't wait for the Sweet 16 matchup with Purdue. Thank you. We'll take it. Take the karma. I appreciate you. Thanks for having us on.